Hi, Jeffrey here. So this is a commentary of my drawing of a dog. This drawing is one I made for a client of mine. She wanted me to draw her dog named Chewy. So of course I start by drawing the eye. The eye is the most important thing to get right, and I use multiple different colors to draw the multiple different reflections in the eye. After that I draw one of the ears. I decided that it makes sense to start the drawing from the top, besides the eye of course, and then start to draw so that I don't have to use a piece of trace paper or a piece of paper to prevent my hand from smearing the drawing. So I start by drawing on the left side and slowly work my way to the right. Meanwhile, I start to draw around the eye. This part starts to get a little tricky because the image has a bit of blurriness to it and there's a lot of short fur. So I have to draw each hair very abruptly and also if looking closely at the reference image, there are a ton of different subtle changes in color. Also, the colors in this area are very bright. So what I do is I start by coloring in the, the color that most looks similar to the image. And then I use a white color pencil and use that to kind of dilute the color so it better matches my reference image. For this area, the darkest areas of the fur are a type of brown and a type of purplish gray. So after I draw those areas, then I draw in the lighter areas, and those include many colors including some pink, some blue, some gray. Another thing to note is that the fur around his eye is shorter than the fur that's farther away from his eye. In addition, the fur around his eye tends to be more pink and purple and brighter than the fur that's farther away as well. The light source in the reference image comes from the left side of the picture, so I make the colors there brighter than they are on the right. In addition, the reference image is more blurry on the left side, so I make the fur more out of focus looking, so I color in larger areas of space compared to more of the fur on the right. Another thing to note is the different directions that the fur points in, and so changing the direction in which I draw the fur depending on where it is. For example, around the eye it kind of curves around it, and then towards the top of his ear it begins to curve backwards. Here I am starting to draw the right side of his face. The fur on the top of his head is brighter than the fur lower on his head. So here I am slowly filling in the space. Depending on how dark the fur is because of the lighting, and also because of the natural color of the fur, I also tend to push harder when the colors are darker into the paper with my pencil, and then push less hard into the paper when the colors are brighter. In addition, the inverse is true for the white I use to dilute the color. I push harder with the white pencil when it's brighter and push less hard into the paper with the white pencil when the color is darker. On the very right side of the face, the color also changes to a kind of yellowish green with some more darker browns. Then I draw the fur right above his nose. This fur kind of curves down and to the left. In addition, some of the fur here is even shorter than the other fur around. So I stop the pencil abruptly even more and then pick it up and then change colors. And then I basically fill in the rest of this portion of the face. And for there I move to the left side and start to draw some of the wrinkles that are visible because he is smiling in this photo. While I draw the wrinkles, I also draw some of the fur around the wrinkles and blend them together. Another thing that's important is, even though I'm drawing each individual fur and trying to get the colors for them, there's also looking at the overall picture, the colors of the overall picture need to be uniform as well. So what I do is after I draw the furs and then dilute them using some white, I then use other colors and shade in more of the overall shading in addition to shading each individual fur so that both the macro and micro level look cohesive. Now I draw the fur around his mouth, which is brighter and thinner. Next I draw the nose, 
starting with the nostrils. There, there is less fur, and the colors are more vibrant. So I make the lines thicker and look more like spots instead of thin, like pieces of fur. I also draw the transition between the tip of his nose and the surrounding fur. There, the fur gets brighter, so I use a kind of yellowish white to highlight that area. At this point, I also start to draw the holes where his whiskers come out of and connect that with the rest of the composition. You can see the detail exactly, I draw it. If I can't see it exactly, then I do a rough approximation of what I see when I draw the detail. Near his mouth, the fur becomes a kind of yellowish green. So I add that into the palette of colors that I have. Around the nose is probably the hardest part so far. The reason being is because it's not complicated enough that I have to do a rough approximation, but it's not simple either, so I have to add a lot of detail and make it look like the reference image. There's also a lot of blurry areas of different kinds of colors mixed in with the whiskers and the hair and the fur transition with the nose where there's no fur, so it gets pretty complicated. So after I've drawn one side of his nose, then I start drawing the other side, starting with the nostril because it's the most uh, significant landmark that makes it so I can reference other areas around the drawing and see exactly where they are in relation to that. This side is less complicated than the other side because it's smaller, but it's still pretty complicated and there's more fur shown than sort of the blurry dots visible on the other side. So I slowly fill in the fur on this side. And also the fur on this side has more variety of color, so it's tricky in that regard. It's less fuzzy than the left side, but there's still moments where it's hard to tell what's happening. Once I have completed drawing this part, then I start to draw the inside of his mouth. The colors here are more vibrant and also more pink and purple. There's also large curved lines in this area. After drawing the inside of his mouth on the right side, I start to draw his tongue. Similar to the inside of his mouth, there's a lot of pinks and purples. However, there are also some blues and grays on spots of his tongue as well. There's also some white areas where it glistens and reflects the light from the outside sources. The hardest part about drawing the tongue is getting the colors correct. The colored pencils I have don't quite align 100% with the colors in my reference image. So I have to do a lot of mixing of colored pencils to get the colors to be more approximate with what I see. In addition, the tongue has a lot of texture and lines, so having to balance getting those drawn properly with also getting the color correct makes for a tricky um, part of the drawing and making sure the tongue gradually goes from dark to light when starting from the top part of his mouth and then to the bottom where the bottom part of his mouth and where it sticks out. Then I start to draw the inside of his mouth on the left side and also start to draw some more of his teeth. The teeth have a little bit of yellowish green as well as some cool and warm gray tones. In addition, his teeth have some reflections of light from the outside, similar to spots on his tongue. Again, the inside portion of his mouth has a lot of very vibrant reds and purples. For the darkest areas, I use black, followed by a darkish red purple color. Drawing the left side is more complicated than drawing the right because for one of the reasons, his saliva is very reflective, and but at the same time, there are areas where it's not reflective. So it's difficult for my eyes to not get lost in the details. But what I do is I mentally break this area down into smaller manageable components and draw each of those one by one. And throughout this process, I'm switching between all kinds of different colors, as you can see. I work my way up, but sometimes I also draw the stuff at the top because I want to be able to connect them seamlessly with each other. And sometimes the area on the bottom gets more complicated and hard to draw, and that gets informed by what's on top. So I just slowly draw each fold one by one and the associated other areas of color with that as well as I move up. Eventually, I complete drawing the inside of his mouth. Here I start to draw his neck. His neck is much more blurry compared in the reference image than his mouth. So when I draw it, I color in large areas of space and then use a white and 
kind of tannish white color to blend those large areas because it's also brighter in color as well. Where there are folds in his neck, the colors are much darker. As you can see, I'm using browns in those areas, and whereas opposed to the other areas, I'm using more kind of pink and even a little bit of blue for the sunlight reflecting on him, and also some yellow and green. Here I am drawing a fold in his neck. And here I am shading in some of the left side of his torso. He also has a large spot of white fur running down the middle of his neck. So I shade in the transitions from brown to white fur as well as the white fur itself. The white fur has is not pure white. There are some blues in there, so I shade that in appropriately. And there's also some spots of brownish fur within the white. And then I shade in the right side. One thing I would like to note is that towards the bottom of this portrait, I had to kind of make up what I had to draw because in the reference image I was using, there's a harness which covers up the bottom area. But my client wanted me to draw his neck and torso as if the harness wasn't there. So I had to synthesize with another reference image of Chewie without a harness and imagine what it would look like in this area without a harness or in this perspective. And then I have completed this drawing. So after I complete the drawing, I add my signature and the client requested that I put my signature on the front in the lower right corner. And so what I do is I first draw it in with graphite pencil to make sure I have the lettering and the proportioning and the spacing correct. And then I make it final by drawing it in using, drawing my signature in using a black colored pencil. And my client requested that on the back of the drawing, on the lower right hand corner on the back, I put his name, Chewy, and below that I put the date that I completed this drawing. So again, first I write it out in graphite pencil, and then after I'm satisfied with its placement, I write on top of that using a black colored pencil to finalize the lettering and the writing. So here I am just slowly and carefully writing out each letter and also writing over some of the letters again to make sure they look nice and crisp and clear looking. And then here's just a video panning through the completed drawing just to see the details and stuff. So yeah, that's this drawing completed. I hope you enjoyed this commentary, and if you enjoy the content that I make, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I will see you all in the next drawing. Thank you for your support.